Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France, starting in 1920. This is episode 20, and we are at part two of an invasion of Sardinia battle. So far, so good. Uh, the airstrikes haven't been quite as decisive as they have been in the past. I'm wondering if that's because, in part, I am sending off airplanes uncoordinated so uh, the enemy ships are able to deal with each individual three, four, five, six attacking planes. So, in the future, I will launch um, a full scale coordinated ones. As you can see, there's a few here and a few there and there and there and there and there and there and there. And there. So, perhaps that hasn't worked very well. My main force, the British up here of two battleships and my own heavy cruisers, uh, three of them, well, two of them now, well, actually one. So I have one with flooding the Admiral Sharma down here. I have a second also dealing with the flooding issues here. Only the Admiral Jacob is fine, and even that has taken quite a bit of damage, but just not flooding damage. The Italians are here. They've taken a lot of punishment, um, but I sort of don't care. All I really care about is that these guys get to go to there. Annihilating this bunch is secondary. And then there are reports all the way up here of a couple of CDLs. So eliminating them would be a jolly nice third place thing. But for now, concentrating on the prize and moving my carrier a little bit closer to the main action. Here are four Chateau class fleet carriers. Over here is, or round about here, is the Lafayette. That's providing cap to the main force. So I probably would like that a little bit closer to. But the immediate tactical problem is to make sure that these bad guys keep going in that kind of direction. Ideally, I would love to force them to round the corner over the top of Sardinia there and allow my own forces to keep in between. That's what I'm aiming to do. I'm also aiming to keep my guys outside of torpedo range because, frankly, I think torpedoes are a lot more dangerous to me than, um, than the guns of these guys. They all claim to be unidentified. These are all heavy cruisers. Uh, I think that's the lone battle cruiser. A couple of strikes still to go in, so some dive bombers here and some torpedo bombers there, and of course our trusty airship with its two parasite fighters protecting it over there as well. Let's set everything to fast. We've got a long time, 12 hours left. In fact, we're only 177 out of 1400, so less than 200 of the game elapsed time, so plenty of time, so no, no need to rush or anything like that. Well, that's all nice. A couple of torpedo hits. All right, three torpedo hits. That's very nice. Okay, so that one claims to be up here. That would seem, possibly, to be where the CVLs and their escorts are, but no idea what they are in particular. This um, centering only seems to work. You just have to be kind of zoomed out a bit in order to see it. Anyhow, back over here. Some more air attacks going in. I'm just going to see how my carriers are doing in terms of planes returned. So, nope, there, that's, um, well, that's just a cap, actually. No, uh, that's of no interest. Oh, yeah, everything is up in the air at the moment. So it's going to be a little while until we um, really find out what's going on. Keeping the Amaral Jacob out of the way, we are what? 16,000, so actually we might just turn it a little bit further out of the way. Here's the all important torpedo line. So let's just keep on dealing with that. The Italians are retreating in what I'm going to call a really good way. We are still 18,000 yards. All right, let's keep opening that distance and moving the Brits towards the French there, so that I can retain some level of command or control of this otherwise difficult to handle force. Nice little hit on a 
Rento with a 16 inch gun, I mean, or 15 inch, that surely that's got to hurt. This one seems to be sinking or reportedly sinking. Medium damage, heavy damage, heavy damage. Um, none of them are having much of a good time. Let's see how far the Chakov is now. That's 20,000 yards. So I'm just going to straighten up because somewhere behind is not far is this lot. So yeah, I would love it to keep all of that going. I'm just going to get rid of some of these um, reports. So that's the cruiser, Alpha Cruiser Force reports removed. Up here, you can see we have some concentrated reports for the CVL. So that's a pretty high confidence that that's taking place just there. 16 inch hits on a Pisa. It's not going to enjoy that either. I'm going to straighten out the lion and the how. I'm going to take the Edon. Let's just check 10 flooding for the Edon. Yeah, I would love that to be a little bit less. The Sharma, three flooding. Okay, it's taking a long, well, what feels like a long time for these heavy cruisers to get on top of their damage control. The Amor Jacob, 38% damage, but none to. Um, its hull integrity. Well, oh, well, we don't both need to be hitting that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, actually, I will let them sort it out amongst themselves. Where's the Pisa? 17,000. Oh, not that Pisa. This Pisa? Nope. Nope. That one. If we encourage them to um, not shoot at the same target, it's not as if there was a shortage. Make the Admiral. Jacob, 20 knots. Uh, we are doing the British, I say, I'm doing 23. So I just would basically like to shield the Amaral Jacob. Use it effectively as a command ship because otherwise I can't control these. But it's already taken a lot of damage and I don't really see any reason to um, put it in any further harm's way. All three of the heavy cruisers are in, frankly, a bit of a state. Okay, there's a destroyer there that's wanting to um, come down. So I'm just going to let loose these guys and see. Yep, that, um, that seemed to sort out the Italian destroyer. Let's put them back onto AI. Oop, now that one blew up. Let's go back to this. I don't think they need to be in line abreast. And let's turn them back. Towards, yeah. Every time I go towards this uh, destroyer, it, uh, it runs away. And then back again. No need to turn together. Back to AI. Push it up. This way, the Italian destroyer is uh, getting out of the way, so that's nice. We'll make the Admiral Jacob 23 knots as well, so it can stay in place. I'm going to turn the Guidon back towards, uh, in fact, it's almost caught up with the Admiral Sharma, or the vice versa. Keep it um, trying to be within control, otherwise, if it gets too far away, you know what's going to happen. Still flooding 10, not happy. So let's have a look here. Well, that seems to have gone stationary. I'm going to take off the manual one on that one. There's a destroyer there, we don't want that. Yeah, let's go for that one. Because again, this, this doesn't seem to be long for this world. Enemy ship. No, oh, so. Finally, some of these um, airstrikes are causing some damage, which is great. I assume it's the air attacks. Contradict me if I am wrong. How far are we from the coast? Okay, so they're heading in that direction, which is a good direction. I'm going to bring the speed of the Lion and the Howl and the Amor Jakob down to 20. So that they stay reasonably close to the convoy. 
And I'm just going to get rid of some of these reports. Clear uh, things up a little bit. And Moshana, oh dear. Oh, God, they've gone back to shooting at the Pisa. I'd much rather it shot at that. So let's go for the BB at 21,000. Mind you, the BB is retreating. Oh. But where the hell did that come? I mean, given that that is the torpedo range, exactly where, can you explain to me, did that come from? Duh. Right. Hopefully. 220. 202. <laughs> okay. So the lion is going to come out of formation. And both of these are going to turn away. Just going to bring it under my control. Let's set the speed down to something more reasonable. You know, I've been really watching this speed thing. Let's see how we're doing with the carriers. So nothing on the Lafayette. Okay, here's a few ready. So let's get this lot all organized for a bit of striking. I'm going to make the fighters into medium, uh, particularly for the older fighters, because at light they have no bombs at all. Let us ready them. See if there's anything in the other two carriers. Oh, yes. But I'm going to prepare these for the carriers, the division with two carriers. I'm going to use them uh, locally. Let's ready them. And then 29, not so many, but let's still get them readied as well. Okay. So that should give us a few more options. I can't believe A, that the line took a torpedo hit outside torpedo range, and two, it's a really modern ship that has got 202 flooding damage. Uh, so here's the Sharma and the Gidon, and they've rushed up to 20 knots. Three flooding for the Sharma, and still 10 flooding. That's at 56% damage and at 44% damage. I'm almost tempted to. Bring, actually, I am tempted. I'm going to bring the lion down towards here. I'm going to bring the how this direction as well. And I'm going to bring the Jacob uh, back. So I'm going to try and concentrate my surface force, my wounded surface force, as, uh, as much as I can. The how is still engaged. So actually, I suppose they can just swing around and do a little bit more fun. Trento is 20,000 yards away, so the, li the Lion is 18,500, and we get an engine room hit from the, uh, from the Trento. Are they 10 inches? Yeah, they are. So Lion limits flooding. Good to hear. How much? 32. Okay, that's quite a lot of flooding limiting. Carry on. And see how we're doing. Lion in that direction. Let's suppose these are in, oh, they are in range again. So let's bring them down back to five. And the Sharma also back to five. I don't know if there's any, you know, ideal speed to limit flooding other than go as reasonably slow as you can. I don't know if it's better to actually stop dead in the water rather than maintain a slight seaway, but anyhow. Hopefully that will sort all of that out. I'm going to send the how to um, just keep chasing, really. It would just be lovely to see them gone. Here's some of strike forces ready. I think that's all of it. I'll give it one more minute. Yeah, OK. Go, go, Zeppelin. What a view. I mean, it's just being, you know, you're drifting around uh, not terribly fast above this battlefield. It must be an extraordinary sight. Flooding is down to one. Well, I salute you, Lion, and your damage control parties. 
let's have a, a bit of a look. Obviously, the forward gun is almost out of ammunition. The uh, superimposed is low and the aft is fine at the moment. So that's OK. That all seems to be going quite well. Right. Let us just zoom out slightly. We've got a ship here and a ship here. I'm going to let loose the carrier force. That's this one. On an area just in front of those two. I am going to coordinate it. I'm going to prioritize battleships. Um, and so the location, and given that it's going to take a time, oh, there's a radar contact there. I'm going to put it about here. 78 miles away and launch all of that lot. Yes, yes, I want yes and yes. Okay, that's got that lot uh, going. Oh, got some unready flying. Don't know how I managed that. Let's have a look at the next lot. So there's a, another nine torpedo bombers to ready. So let's ready them. And ditto two more lots here. So let's ready them as well. Let's bring all that together for the strike that we're going to have a go at on the um, light carriers. I'm going to aim how towards the uh, top of the peninsula there. I'm going to turn the lion around, I think, given that it's um, feeling so much better wherever it's gone. Oh, here it is. So yeah, just one flooding left. Uh, I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to take its speed up to something pedestrian like 12, just so that the gap between it and the others doesn't get too big. And I'm going to turn the Admiral Jacob around um, so that um, that's still not good. Still at three. Yeah, not, not loving both of those. So that the howl doesn't go uh, too far out of command radius. It really would be very helpful to know what the uh, the command radius is. Um, is it visual? I mean, is it that simple? Let's see. That's the visual. See once it crosses that line whether it. Um, so two hits on a Trento. Well done. Not going to like that very much either. And all is good. Uh, the convoy still heading towards good stuff. There's an unidentified ship over there. All right, let's max you and let's head that way. Because, you know, really? I don't like the sound of that at all. I will also send you in that direction and I will send you the Admiral Jakob. So, how Line and Jakob all going uh, directly east to uh, be a bit concerned. Enemy aircraft uh, having a go at one of our carriers. One of our destroyers struggling. Four enemy dive bombers, no hits. And there's the rest of the strike. Do you want to adjust the final strike location? Say yes to click, select yes, and click on the map to adjust. Uh, select no to keep. I've never seen that message before. Let's let's go here. I mean, I'd love to go there. Uh, eye on the prize. This is an invasion battle. Let's go there and uh, hope that that um, does the business. And if nothing else, and it's a wasted strike, well, never mind. There's a great cluster. So let's of uh, reports. Let's go down to this division. They're all ready. Let's coordinate them. Let's CV them, and let us set the location for about here. And oh, strike exceeds depth load. Let's launch that lot, and then for our other carrier division. Let us pick one of these targets. Let's pick the most recent with a TV. 
which is that, which was before 7.02. It's now, it's now 10 o'clock. So I can't really put any credence on that. So I'll cancel that and we'll launch that off in maybe that direction and launch them. And then I'll just go back to my main carry division just to see if there was anything there. No, there isn't. That's fine. Set the carriers to catch up a bit. Oh, they seem to have gone a bit bonkers. Let's take them down to 20 knots. And let's go back to the how and see what they make of this radar contact that's now become unidentified. The Jacob's there, so it would be interesting to see if we just go out of that range, do we instantly go out of control? And the short answer seems to be no. Uh, how is seemingly pounding this one with 15 inch guns, which, you know, fair enough. And I would love it. Can I move it to unidentified? No. How's the lion doing? Still one flooding. I'm just reluctant to put, the, uh, put my foot down and get it shifting because I don't want that to, you know, suddenly breach. So this well within, I mean, 17,000 yards and we're still going, oh, what's that? This looks like it's uh, going to be sinking. I'm going to ask the how to pause for 10 minutes because I think it's just wasting ammunition. And what does that say? Well, it says it's a CL. I doubt it, but we can ask it to attack the CL. Happy over that. And just pining across my main thing. Uh, so some of ours approaching enemy ships. That's nice. Wherever you are, I don't want this chap to be going that way. I particularly don't want this chap to be going that way. I might risk it. What's the maximum? Twenty-four. Take it down to twenty for the lion, and see if we can sustain that. I am not keen. Okay, it's a destroyer. <laughs> right. um, so I shouldn't really be running down a destroyer with a battleship. So I'm going to turn him north. I'm going to take him down to 20. I'm going to take this chap and yeah, bring him back down to 10. See if we can get rid of that flooding. Turn him north. Turn the Jakob north as well. I will take these into my control and see if we can go and um, put the frighteners on that destroyer. Don't know where my wounded ones are. Still ten, and still three. I'm going to end this episode here. There's lots more of this battle to come, but I thought it'd be better to chop it up and serve you up twices a little and often. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Part three is going to come soon. For now, thanks for watching and stay safe.